Well, good morning and welcome again to uh, Hammock Community Church and our memorial service today for, for Linda McCowan. So just want to welcome you here and uh, just grateful that you guys came out. Uh, we're going to start today by opening up in prayer. And uh, my, my really good friend uh, Wayne is going to sing a solo song. We'll probably help him out a little bit. I hope can. so. Amen. I hope so. Please open us up in prayer, Wayne. Father God, as we bend our hearts before your throne, we remember Linda, and we think of her today, specifically. We rejoice in her, and we thank you for all that you did in her life, and all that she did in our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. This is not a solo. This is just where I sing, and you guys can sing with me. I'm a little bit lower than most, so. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all of the I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art, when through the woods and forest glades I wander. And hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur, And hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art, and when I think that God His Son not sparing, Send him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on a cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take my sin. Then sings 
is my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Beth, would you please come forward?
Linda loved the Lord Jesus as her personal Savior. She wanted to attend church whenever she could, and she looked forward to the freedom of movement in heaven. Born with rheumatoid arthritis, Linda surmounted lifelong challenges, including more than 60 orthopedic surgeries and chronic pain. She had grit, wit, and a determination to thrive as well as survive. She embraced her family heritage of surely stubbornness. Throughout her life, she always had a ready smile for others, and a genuine love for her family and friends. And those dimples, oh, those dimples. <laughs> Linda was not only a very young looking and cute little lady, she had a special way of attracting friends and acquaintances who eagerly befriended her. During her whole life, she was always well liked by everyone who met her. She would always greet them with a smile and a hug, and took the time to listen to them and make new friends. Linda adored her children and grandchildren, family and friends, and she loved to be with people. She especially loved babies, animals, and pets. Best of all, she loved the simple things about family life. She is now among the angels and will be missed by all who knew her. Linda is survived by her loving husband, Jay, brother, Gary, sons, Justin, who lives with his wife and children in Texas, and Curtis, who lives here in Idaho, grandchildren, Trinity, Madison, and Beretta, and her precious copper-colored Pomeranian pin. like to sing just this little memory of Linda. When I see this, when I sing this song, I can see our precious little Linda. And I hope you can see her too, smiling in heaven. Jesus, I heard you had a big house where I'd have a room of my own. And Jesus, I heard you had a big Big enough to let a kid grow. I heard you had clothes in your closet, just the right size that I can wear. And Jesus, I heard if I give you my heart, then you would let me go there. Jesus. I heard that in your big house there's plenty of love to go around. I heard there's always singing and laughter to fill the place with happy sounds. And I've been thinking that a friend who would give me all that he's got before I had even met him, well, he sure must love me a lot. And Jesus, I just want to tell you, I sure do love you a lot. I'd like to take the time right now to uh, open the floor up to anybody who would like to uh, share any thoughts and memories or anything that you would like to say to the family. Please come, feel free to come forward. Hi, I'm Wayne, Wayne Mullis. I didn't know Linda that much. Well. just here at church. And she uh, touched my life despite her struggle and stuff like that. But the Lord gave me a vision about her. I'll share a little bit. This is what the church is doing about. I think the Lord wants to do it. 
When my mom passed, I was tasked with the memorial service for her. That was a little tough. But it wasn't so tough when the Lord showed me her. Um, my aunts and uncles and stuff that would say that she was always with and always giving, and her legs were always moving, and she loved to dance. And the Lord gave me a vision of my mother dancing before the throne. I told him about dancing with my mom. <laughs> it was an amazing vision. And, and then the whole crowd, the whole throng in heaven is just dancing with them. But she's not hurt. She's no longer in pain. She's experiencing the joy like we hope for. Anybody else? Kind of like uh, Beth was saying earlier, uh, she, she's very young, she's very cute, uh, and she never lived her age. And uh, she, uh, <laughs> I remember first coming into the military, I didn't drink much in those days, but <laughs> we'd try to go to a club or a bar, maybe on the base or someplace off. It was there. <laughs> we never got past the front it seemed like they, they stopped us right at the door. And, Of course, we got to show IDs. They didn't believe it. They got through the porch. At least for her, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, hey, we just wanted to have a little drink or something. You know, and yeah, this went on for a while. Probably almost 20 years before. <laughs> <laughs> that was just the kind of person that she, uh, she looked like. But she was very, very interesting. And uh, she, uh, she'd get mad from time to time. And uh, she was very sweet. And uh, I said, don't worry. I'll buy you some wine or something with the plastic store on the face. We'll have a little gift together. But, uh, yeah, I, I remember the comments. Uh, uh, Sir, you can't bring your little girl in here. <laughs> I was 20. I don't know what you thought. I don't know. I can't imagine that. Uh, but, uh, um, God, that despite all the hassles and everything else, or, um, you know, one time I remember one lady came up and said, I got to see this. I don't believe so we showed her the military ID, we showed her the driver's license, and she just threw out there. So anyway, we got, I think we got to drink that. No. Uh, <laughs> but we weren't really big into it. I, I'd have to say maybe, uh, uh, maybe I could thank her for, uh, uh, we never had any drinking problems. We didn't have any drinking There we go. You know? We just, we were in moderation, so it was a good thing. Uh, and that's just something that I think 
those earlier years, you know, just we'll have to go to school, we'll go to the movies, and we'll stay away from the club. Uh, and uh, my best said, she was very young looking, uh, cute lady. And she always had a special way of attracting people. So, uh, obviously, it probably was love at first sight, but she had an infectious smile, I just didn't know it at the time. But, I noticed too is that because of that, you know, every time we go in the store, I, I got to thinking, you know, if it's just a couple of items, I just let her sit in the car, just kind of relax. But if there's more things she wanted to go in, she wanted to shop. But I knew what was coming. I, I knew that just about everybody in the store would stop and uh, say, hey, uh, hey, my dad, next thing you know, it's a big conversation. And this happened almost every time we went in the store. So I'd always factor in extra time. I just knew what was going, going down. I think a few of you probably. But anyway, it happened, and so uh, I was a good, dutiful husband. I, I just let her have the basket, have her visits. So I'd walk the whole store, and I got exercise that day. So I was able to bring all the groceries, even from the far end of Walmart, all the way back to the basket. And most of the room was all filled. Uh, she would be done. She was. She got the cue. Uh, but that's just how engaging and how wonderful she was. Uh, and I got good exercise. Um, <clears throat> Linda adored her children, friends, and family. She, she loved people. Well, that's just the way she was. Uh, like uh, Beth said, she, it just seemed like she loved everything families like to do. And you, know, you can appreciate that when you're married. Uh, but, she loved everything. I mean, traveling, sightseeing, uh, fishing, boating. She just wanted to do it. I, I think I told one of the people today, I, I remember going up to the Dallas area and we, we got out of the car and there's this big bird, a big one sheep, that just on the cliffs, just buzzed. And I told him I get the camera, so I was rummaging around in the car and then I turned around and she wasn't there and I looked, she was like hundreds of yards down the road. She was trucking and she was going to get up there and get close as she could, so she wanted to see him in real life. So uh, that's just the kind of person she was. She loved animals. She loved babies, she loved pets, uh, she loved anything. There was a baby in the room, but it was seen when he had a lot of wild animals, didn't matter, she was right there. And, uh, 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 she, she had other sides to her, but uh, I remember when I was st stationed at Air Force Base in California, uh, I was kind of into racing at that time a little bit. So I joined this SCCA racing club, and we had an art explorer in Mazda. You know, I, I just love going out there and competing, racing. I think it's even a picture up there where she's behind the wheel of, of this car. But she got behind some of the sports cars there, too. Anyway, she was up, and uh, she, she loved, she loved racing. So, uh, we, we had a fun time at the club, and we traveled around the, that part of the state. And, uh, we, uh, it, it was, uh, it was you yeah, know, the gym cameras that you have, and the parking lot rallies and stuff, and all kinds of people with sports cars. And, had a great time. Drove a lot of really cool cars. And uh, she loved it. And uh, I think I think my mother probably knew as well as anybody how much she loved speed. She, she really loved it. Of course, my son, if you watch him drive his boat, it's in his jeans right now. He's got one of the fastest boats in the state, I think, right now. Uh, let's see. Um, she had a natural curiosity. And, uh, and she would listen to every little thing I said. At least I thought she was. But she would, she would listen to my stories and I would talk about things, you know, uh, sometimes they're scientific, sometimes they're historical, sometimes it's just off the cut things. But she'd listen, and I'd often wonder if she really, if she really listened. I, every now and then I, I would, uh, I would just kind of probe her for a couple of things, just to see. She, 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 she listened to everything. I, I, she was like a natural
been in the military. Uh, I traveled all over the world, and uh, I got to tell you, I had more TDYs than probably my share of people. I, I, I've been gone for weeks and months. And, you know, Linda's she's a small girl, small lady. And, uh, she had her hands full of the boys in the house, and even a job later in life. And she kind of, I don't know how she did it, but I was able to do my duty. And uh, she did hers in spades. Not one last thing I say, I guess I would say this. She can't miss anything, but uh, we were just in the hospital this time. She said that she. Uh, she was so tired of being in the hospital that she didn't want to eat anything. So I got her talking about being at home again. She says, well, I want to be here for my birthday. She says, I want chocolate cupcakes, chocolate cake, and sparky cider. And I said, you got it. And, uh, and then my family will all be kind of partaking in that tonight. This is her birthday. So, Close at that point, I, I'd rather just talk with you one of you one on one after this service and uh, hopefully you can back to back and then talk to the pot up and back and uh, if you could find me to share my my uh, memories and, and just find out how you would be with me. And I, I want to really thank all of you for coming today. And, uh, and there's a lot of good friends and family here. Thank you. Especially, I want to throw out thanks to Beth and her husband Dave. Uh, they've been extremely helpful uh, these last few days, um, the last couple of weeks, really. Um, so, she's been one of the best friends. So, I thank you for And also, I'd like to thank my, my, my boss.
Pastor Chuck Snyder again, and uh, again, welcome to Hemp Week Church today. Um, we're going to open up the worship now, so uh, anybody wants to come up and help with that? So uh, it's amazing to me, uh, this Monday used to come to church so regularly, and uh, one thing that just, was just really awesome to me is the fact that she would come, because she struggled uh, physically. And I know it, it took it took a lot within her just to be able to climb into a car and drive it, let alone make it to church. And uh, so it was always awesome to see her come in to church because she always had a smile on her face. And she always brought Madison with her too. And um, you know, Madison, you know, since she was little, she, she used to come up here, she would help us with worship. I don't know if she wants to today, but she's always welcome. She's got a great voice. And um, I told Jen when we found out, I was like, you know, she's family. She, she's my family. And that's, that, isn't that awesome to know that's not really true?
Before I start the sermon, I, I think I'd like to, I, I, I penned this poem just last, last week, and uh, just thinking about loved ones and uh, the shadows of them in your life, and uh, I just wanted to read this for you. It's called The Shadows of You. I was standing in the walkway, watching shadows pass me by, thinking of my loved ones, long cast shadows in my eyes. The sting of death surrounds me. Long past memories in my mind, but there I see you smiling, laughter raining out of you. Suddenly the tears flow, because I can't hold on to you. Time's shadows walk past me, as I see my days with you. How long you think you got now, those precious scenes brush my mind. Memories of a loved one, as their shadows pass me by. I was standing in the walkway of my memories we share. I was standing in the walkway, hoping for a moment with you there. 
I just want to tell you this morning, as we uh, prepare for this sermon, let, can we pray real quick? please? Most gracious and heavenly Father, we just ask for your blessing upon your word. We thank you for this day, and we thank you for Miss Linda, Lord. In our hearts and minds, we know she's still alive. She's not gone. We're just, there's just time between us right now, Father. But I pray that you give her joy in your presence right now. And quite frankly, Lord, that you give us a taste of what she's experiencing right now. We love you and we worship you. Be with us now as we open up your word. I'm in a, I've entitled this morning's sermon, Hope for the Hurting, Hope for the Hurting. I'm in Romans 15, chapter, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 15, verse 4. And I'm in the New American Standard Bible. And this is the scripture that really touched my heart this week. For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. We might have hope. And I cannot imagine a more appropriate word for today. We all need it. What? Endurance? Yes. Encouragement? Absolutely. And hope. That is exactly what the very word of God and being born again and having that born again experience gives to us if we are willing to accept it and, and embrace it. And I got to tell you, my sister, Miss Linda, she was born again. She was a child of the king, amen? And she's my friend. And as I think of her, I think of Miss Linda right now at this very moment, I, I think about what she would say to each one of us. I'm so grateful she's a born again Christian. You would say, Chuck, you just referred to Linda as in the present tense, and I would say to you, exactly. You see, God is not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. He's the God of the living. How do you know that? Well, it's what Jesus said. Matthew 22, verse 22 through 33. It says, on that day, some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and questioned him, asking, Teacher, Moses said, if a man dies having no children, his brother, as next of kin, shall marry his wife and raise up children for her brother. Now there were seven brothers with us, and the first married and died, and having no children, left his wife to his brother. And so also the second and the third, down to the seventh. Last of all, the woman died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife of the seven shall she be? For they all were married to her. But Jesus answered to them, you are mistaken. Not understanding the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Can you imagine Miss Linda right now? She's like an angel in heaven. It's just awesome. But regarding the resurrection of the dead, he said, have you not read what was spoken to you by God? I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the crowds heard this, and we should all be in the same frame of mind, they were astonished at his teaching. See, God doesn't see us as what? When we're born again, he doesn't see us as what? Dead. He sees us very much alive. Miss Linda is very much alive. Alive. And I say this in full confidence. Miss Linda is not dead, but very much alive. In fact, she is more alive now than any of us here can even begin to imagine what she's experiencing right now in heaven. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 57. Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. But I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. And in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the devil will be raised up imperishable. You know what that means, right? You're never going to die. And we will be changed. For the perishable must put on the imperishable, and the mortal must put on immortality. But when this perishable will have put on in, the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? For the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the victory. Death has no victory in this moment. Death has no victory here. Death has been absolutely swallowed up in life. And so what would Miss Linda tell you right now? I know. Be born again. That's what she would tell you. Why? Because she, she wants to see you again. Amen? She wants to see you again. I want you to imagine for a moment what it was like for her when her soul and her spirit left her body to be escorted and presented before God. 
Imagine the transformation for her into absolute perfection. No more pain, no more sorrow. I, I'll tell you, that woman endured so many surgeries. And the ability, I, the last time I saw her, Jay, was where? We were in Walmart. And, and she was walking, and she was holding on to that cart, but she was still trying to walk, even in all the pain that she was enduring. And you know what she did? She smiled. And it was good to see her. And it was good to see her. And we told each other that we loved each other. I just want you to know that. Miss Linda was my friend. She's a great woman. Amen? I believe that with all my heart. Right now, the transformation, absolute perfection. Imagine what it was like when she entered the very kingdom of God and every saint, every angel, and the Lord himself rejoicing because another family member's made it home. Imagine the Lord Jesus Christ giving her a grand tour of heaven and leading her to the home. Listen, he personally prepared for her. Imagine that. Imagine him taking her and going, Miss Linda, wait, wait till you see that. I, I, I got to wonder. I got to wonder what my home is going to look like when I get home. Amen. I'm, I'm wondering what that's going to be like. It's absolutely going to be awesome. How do you know that to be true, Chuck? Well, Jesus told us that. John 14, 1 through 6. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. And if it were not so, I would have told you. For I go, listen, to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to where I'm going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How do you know? How do we know the way? And Jesus said to him, what? I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Linda now knows more about God. She knows more about my master and my savior, Jesus Christ. She knows more about the Holy Spirit and the kingdom than any of us can even begin to fathom. She now knows something I long for personally from afar. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more hurt, no more distance between her and her creator. She has obtained everything that the Lord has promised to her and I have to say it, what both he and her wants for you. It is we who are in mourning, but for us Christians, we don't mourn without hope. We don't mourn without hope. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. Listen, this is the word of the Lord. That we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, listen, therefore comfort one another with these words. Did you know that God collects your tears? He collects your tears. I, I collect guitars. I, I, collect, I collect baseball cards. I collect all kinds of weird stuff. But God collects your tears. Every tear that you ever shed, he collects. How do you know it says it right there? Look, look at that. You have taken account of my wanderings. And put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? The book. Every day designed for you is in the book of God. I just want you to know that. I would like to share with you a conversation that the Lord and I had when my mother passed. And I, I got to tell you, I've dealt with a lot of loss in my life. Um, my younger sister, by 18 years, by 18 years passed away not long ago. My mom. And when I, when I lost my mom, even as a born-again Christian, I struggled with that. And as I, as I was talking to the Lord, he, he asked me, he said, Chuck, what, what is it that you really want? And I was like, Lord, I, I don't want to lose anyone. He goes, yeah, yeah, but what is it, what is it that you really want? I, go, I, I want to be with them forever. And, and before this happened, you know, before my mom passed, I was, I was asking God for his desires. I wanted his desire. And, and when we're having this conversation, he goes, yeah, I want the very same thing. I don't want to lose anyone, and I want to be with them forever. 
And I don't know about you, but that just washed over me and brought comfort to my heart to know that the desire that you have to want to be with your loved ones forever is a really good thing, and it comes directly from the heart of God. You have the same desire that he has. Listen closely. There is no one, including our Lord and Master, who have not passed from this world. Never forget, though, that he rose from the dead, and his promise to you who believe is the same. It's the same. How do you know? Deal with this. Just listen to this scripture. John 11, 1 through 45. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So the sister sent word to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. But when Jesus heard this, he said, this sickness is not the end of death, but for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he then stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said, well, everybody, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and you're going there again? And Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, but he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Then he said, and after he said to them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go so that I may waken him out of his sleep. And the disciples then said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he'll, he'll, he'll recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought he was speaking of literal sleep. So Jesus then said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Therefore Thomas, who was called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, so that we may die with him. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, but about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to him and met him. But Mary stayed at the house. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord. I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, even he who comes into the world. And when she had said this, she went away and called her Mary, her sister, saying secretly, the teacher is here and is calling you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and was coming to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and consoling her, when they saw that Mary got up, quickly went out and they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Therefore, when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him and fell at his feet, saying to him, listen again, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled and said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Shortest scripture in the Bible, Jesus wept. So the Jews were saying, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? So Jesus, again, being deeply moved within, came to the tomb. And now it was a cave and a stone was laying against it. And Jesus said, remove the stone. And Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be a stench, for he's been in there four days. And Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but because of the people standing around, I said it that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. You know, I heard this, that the reason he only said Lazarus' name is because if he had said all, if he had said just come forth, they all would have come out of the graves. 
Think about that. Verse 44, the man who died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. And Jesus said to him, unbind him and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who came to Mary and saw that he did what he had done believed in him. The Lord wants to encourage you today. He wants to help you endure. He wants to comfort you. And he most certainly wants to give you hope. And hope is not in the English verb here. It's the Greek. In, in English, hope means, I think so. I, I might. But that's not the word in the Greek. The Greek means this, literally. I have a favorable, confident expectation. A favorable, confident expectation. If you did not know that, it's not, I think so. No, it's most certainly, I know so. And that's exactly what God wants to give to you today. I know I will see Linda again, and I promise you that is her desire, even now, for every one of us. Listen to John 11, 25 through 27. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will, what? Never die. That's Miss Linda. She said to him, yes, Lord, I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God. That's how you enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's how you enter into a personal relationship with him. That's how you get born again. Even he who comes into the world. This portion of scripture, Jesus speaking, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. What's he talking about? Going to the cross for us. So that whoever believes in him will what? Have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged, but he who does not believe in him has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the one and only begotten Son of God. This is the judgment, that light has come into the world, and men love the darkness rather than the light, for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light, does not come to the light, for fear that his deeds might be exposed. But he who practices the truth comes into light, so that his deeds may be manifested as being wrought in God. You realize you are her legacy. You are her legacy. And the greatest honor you and I can bestow upon her is to love and believe in Jesus just like she did so we can see her again. My, my great hope is that we will all see our friend again and to believe just like she did. For her, Psalm 23 has become reality. Psalm 23 has become reality for her. Psalm of David, listen to it. A Psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I love this part. And I will, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And if I leave you with any thought other than that, that is the thought I would like to leave you with today. Is the thought to know that what? Number one, she's not dead. Number two, she's, she's going to live forever. And number three, her hope right now is that she's just going to see you all. That's really her, her hope now. Look, we're the ones that are left behind to mourn. We're the ones who cry. But not without a fair, confident expectation that what? We'll get to go home one day. And we'll be with her. Does that make sense to you all? I hope that makes sense to you guys. Any thoughts? Any, 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 any other comments that anybody would like to make? We'd like to uh, just, again, thank you guys for being here today. Uh, there is food and everything that's uh, prepared for you guys uh, back in the, in the fellowship hall. Um, but let's, let's close in prayer, please.
Most gracious and heavenly Father, again, we just uh, thank you for today. We thank you for the comfort that you bring to us, the encouragement that you give to us. And Lord, I would pray very specifically for everyone here that you would literally draw in so close to us, that you would literally come in and bring comfort to our lives. Lord, that you would give us that form of confidence and a great hope. We, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for what he did for us upon the cross. And again, Lord, that you would just, just give us a taste of what Miss Linda is experiencing with you right now as she rejoices in your presence. And even as Wayne said, I could just see that dancing literally in heaven. Longing for us to come home now, Father. Lord, we love you and we worship you. And uh, we just, we're just grateful to you for this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, oh, one more thing. Lord, Lord, bless the food as we're preparing it and our fellowship with one another. And uh, just, just thank you again for all that you, you give to us and all that you provided. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Thank you so much for coming today. Any other thoughts, Jay? Amen. God bless. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Hey, live long and prosper. In fact, live forever. Amen.